Cal State Fullerton Titans head coach Diedrich Taylor is back on Marching to Madness this afternoon. Coach Taylor has the program at 41 and 24 over the past two seasons. They won 10 out of their last 11 outings before a close loss to UCSB in the Big West Championship game. Coach, welcome back. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Having me, it's a pleasure to uh, to be here with you and share this time. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Uh, your guys won eight in a row and 10 out of the last 11 before that loss to, to Santa Barbara. Talk about how your game picked up so readily uh, in the second half of the schedule almost. You know, I think traditionally it's it's been interesting to watch our teams. We kind of try to, we, we struggle a little bit in the preseason trying to figure things out and and then in the first part, even the first part of conference, it takes us a little time to kind of figure things out. And then, you know, eventually over the last three or four years, we've we've hit a stride and 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 it's been it's been phenomenal to watch. It's been fun to see um to 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 see those guys take on the type of role that they have acquired and figure each other out. And all of a sudden, once they figure it out and it, it slowly but surely comes together, they they take advantage of that. And it's really, really a lot of fun to watch them. Uh, accomplished that last year and, and really uh, see those guys buy into each other, but probably buy into the greater good of each other, the success of each other, realizing that if I'm going to be successful, I need him to be successful. And uh, when you have that kind of energy and you have that kind of vibe, it's hard not to experience a level of success. And uh, we did that last year and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun to, to experience. Talk about the emergence of the program now in the last two seasons. Of course, you were in the NCAA tournament last year and then just that one game away uh, in 22-23. Well, I look back over the course of, you know, over the course of the time in, in terms of like we also have been in the championship game the last four out of five years. And it's all about the people. It's all about the players. We've had some really talented guys, but the really talented guys have bought into one, one another. They bought into the way that we need to defend. They bought into the way that we need to play offense and they've executed that, that, that philosophy night in and night out. And that philosophy has changed and altered a little bit, but for the most part, it's predicated on some really sound, in my opinion, sound principles um, that these guys have been able to um, execute. Uh, night in and night out. And it's been fun to see them, you know, and you start with a group of guys that in most cases, they're not familiar with each other. They're definitely not with familiar with the way that you want to do things and to watch them kind of um, figure it out as, as time moves forward and come out on top is nothing short of fascinating, but it says a lot about the young men in our program. It says a lot about our staff as well, because they, um, they pitch in a huge amount of time, effort and energy uh, into getting these guys to understand, you know, what this thing is about. Um, and, and so far, our guys have bought into that and, and produced at a high clip, I would say. Yeah, Latrell Wright Sell uh, was your leading scorer and let, uh, and is one of last season's transfers. He goes to Alabama. Now, with three years in your program, talk about building his game and how he became such an integral scorer and rebound. You know, I think I think Latrell kind of like if you want to take it back to old school where guys come in as freshmen and they're highly touted, but they're yes. quickly humbled um, by some of the other talent in your program. And I think he was humbled by two things. There are the other other people in our program, but obviously he was humbled by COVID. Um, COVID reared his head and, and that had a big impact on him, but he also got hurt uh, his first year. And so I think he had to deal with things a little bit different than he was used to. And I think that had that allowed him to um, understand what this thing was about in terms of building up to what he became. Did I know that that was in there? Yes, I knew he was very capable of a guy that could score from all three levels. I thought he could handle the ball well. I thought he could pass it. Um, and it all came to fruition for him last year, but he had to go some, through some things in terms of injury, in terms of COVID, in terms of being a, I would say, maybe a rotational guy on a, on a very talent field uh, ball club, but also understand that he played a pivotal part uh, in that team's success. And then moving into the following year, last year, understanding, hey, this is my ship. I want to lead this group and I want to lead this program to to heights that 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 stand for what I believe in and what he believed in. And so it was exceptionally fun to watch him 
matured throughout the course of time and become who he became for us. And, and we're, we're excited for him and what's to come for him at Alabama. Uh, I'll be tuned in and watching uh, like I'm sure a lot of uh, his friends and family, but, but he's earned um, what he's got, you know, he came here and he showed that he improved um, that, that he, he can play with the big boys. And so I'm anxious for him to, uh, to have that opportunity to, to display what he can. Now, Max Jones returns to you, and he's from here in Tampa. Uh, he takes his game uh, to an even higher level. He shot 39.5% from three last season in 31.8 minutes per game. Yeah, Max is a guy that that just – he's a utility knife. He does a little bit of everything, um, and you look at the summation of, of of his contribution and you just, you just marvel at the amount of minutes that he played every night – um, the amount of productivity across the board. Not only did he rebound the ball, but he shot free throws well. He shot the three well. He could score next close to the basket. Um, there's a multitude of things that, that he did for us um, that he'll continue to do for us to have success moving forward. And I'll tell you, watching him over this summer, there's one thing that completely, I mean, it, it quickly jumps off the page. It's just his level of focus um, and his level of confidence of what he did last year but what he wants to do this year and the amount of work that this young man has put into his body, getting in better shape, shooting the ball better, making plays for us. Um, it's been sh nothing short of, of, of fun to watch. Um, just, just the impact that, that he's had on our program, but also watching the impact that he's been able to have on himself and understanding, Hey, I'm capable of more. So I'm going to do more. And mm -hmm. he's, he's done that. Coach, you had, you had 11 seniors listed uh, on the 22-23 roster. So how many of them will return for a fifth year? Um, I think we have, I think it's a total of four um, that were listed as seniors um, mm -hmm. that will be back for us. Vincent Lee, um, who's in grad school, he'll be back for us. Grayson, um, uh, he'll be back for us. Uh, he's in grad school. Tori. Uh, San Antonio, the same thing. Um, I'm missing a couple of other guys, but because of that COVID, you know, you guys' years in school and eligibility, it's all it's all screwed up. Yeah, I, I know Tory San Antonio uh, was a key player for you. He did a lot of good things last season. So talk about him and where his game can go this year. Yeah, I think you know, just 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 he he's he's poised to. Uh, be the defensive to repeat as the defensive player of the year um, mm -hmm. and that's something that he hangs his hat on is just a guy that 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 will guard anybody and anything and do anything for a win um, and that's just his mantra that's how he's made up and he's excited to uh, to 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 go back to back if you will um, as a defensive player but I think also we saw his emergence as an offensive player last year um, with his ability to shoot the basketball, his ability to put pressure on the rim. And again, he's another guy that that is oozing with confidence right now um, based on what he did last year. But what I think he wants to accomplish this year, now that he is who he is, you know, rolling into his last year, he wants to go out guns a blazing, so to speak. And, and I'm excited for him. Um, again, just his confidence, um, what he has done to – uh, help himself from a from an offensive standpoint, but still also maintaining the level of play that he does defensively. Uh, I expect nothing short of but great things from him. Donovan O'Day, Antoine Robinson, then a pair of Florida needs. I have here uh, Beryl Kambaba and Jalen Cooper, followed by Zachary Vincenton. Uh, those are new Titans that uh, we will see on the 23-24 roster. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll have quite a bit of a, a new nucleus, if you will, of guys. We signed three high school kids, uh, Keith out of Keith Richardson out of out of Dallas, um, who we're really excited about. I think he's super athletic. Um, but Donovan O'Day, another young man that you mentioned there, he's out of Dallas. They know each other as well, but he's a year older. Um, but they they will handle a lion's share of the guard responsibility for us. Um, what Zach gives us and provides for us is just some girth underneath the basket to help Vincent and to help Mikey. And uh, we signed another kid, Kendrick um, DeLuna, who, who, in my opinion, I think he's got the best set of big, uh, best set of hands that I've seen um, since I've been coaching, you know, at 6'10", 6'11". I mean, he, he can really, really pass the basketball. He's got to get stronger. He's a typical freshman. 
Um, but I think that he'll have an impact immediately on our on our program and Antoine just his ability to shoot the basketball with unbelievable range again he's a freshman from St. Louis um, and, and I think he's probably the most well put together dude uh, that we've seen come to us you know most guys they leave us and they're, they're they, they they put in some time in the weight room but Antoine was he's 6'4 and he's 208 pounds on a on a Skittles diet like that's what he loves to eat and so we're trying to help him understand you know, putting nutrition into your body and adding good fuel, but at 6'4", 208 pounds as a freshman. Wow. Um, and, and as they say, he's got a torch on his shoulder. He can really, really shoot the ball. So I'm, as you can tell, I'm excited about him and what I think he can do for a ball club. Sure, and, and as we talk about these kids, it sounds like you're going to have a lot of depth there. In one yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think we improved our ball club in two areas. Um, particularly in terms of depth. I think we have more guys that can do more things that can help impact our program, which which I think reared its head a little bit in Santa Bar in the Santa Barbara game. You know, our guys were just they were just spent playing the way that they played. And we, you know, three or four guys, our four guards played a majority of the minutes. They averaged 31, 35 minutes a game. And so this year's group, I think we're more athletic. And I think there's just more guys that will be able to uh, contribute positively to our program as far as just just what it is that we want to do and um, hopefully give us an opportunity to to wear some opponents down and and uh, get the game where we want it. As I studied uh, last season, I noticed uh, possession length were were interesting numbers uh, because it looks like by and large you guys work for your shots while defending and forcing turnovers. Sure, yeah, I think that's something that especially last year's team bought into in terms of defending, like we want to defend, we want to rebound and we want to get out and run. Um, so they understood that and really, really did a good job of executing those things, you know, playing four guards at a time. You would think we didn't re we wouldn't rebound the ball as well as we did, but we were able to rebound it. And then they also bought into paint touch scores, you know, and I think the length of the possession demonstrates touching the paint first before we take a shot. Let's touch the paint first and collapse the defense. And now all of a sudden it allowed the guys that shoot the ball, they shot it really well. And I think as a team, we shot maybe second or first in our conference um, of three point field goal percentage. And I think that's a testament to, to the group of guys that, that really, really bought into playing the game that way last year, as far as rebounding, Defending, rebounding, and let's get out and run. And just because you run, it doesn't mean that you got to take a wild or crazy shot. They understood spacing, they understood ball movement, and they shared the basketball, um, which I think allowed them to be super, super efficient and productive on the offensive end of the floor. Obviously, coaching is teaching. And when you see players who may be struggling in a certain area, how are you and your staff able to make the correction and do it in a positive manner? So, you know, they'll, they'll latch right into that. Yeah, I think I think a lot of it goes back to, you know, the summer in terms of learning about those guys and then coming to some kind of agreement of, hey, these are two or three things that you do really, really, really well. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can almost perfect those things before we can think about or talk about doing anything else. And one of those things is just playing as hard as you possibly can. When you're on the floor, just play as hard as you possibly can. And if that becomes a habit in bigger games or those moments when they're struggling, we try to get them to focus back on the things that they do really well, two or three things. And so in that, there's an alignment with what we say and what we do. If they equal a level of productivity, then we can always, you know, attach or hang our hat on that. Um, and when guys are struggling, you, you go back to, hey, what is it that you do well? What habits do you have? What habits have you created? And are those habits good enough um, to 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 help us win the game. And it never it doesn't mean that you're going to be eight for 10 from the free throw line. It doesn't mean that you're going to shoot 50% from, from the floor. It means that you're going to play extremely hard and you're going to give yourself a chance um, at doing some of the things that we believe in that lead to winning. And so when guys are struggling, those are the kinds of conversations that we have. And we we, we talk about it. We show them on film. And, and, and we just work. We literally put in the work to uh, to try to, um, be better, you know, be as good as we are, be, be better than we were yesterday and be better than we were, uh, the next day. And so that's, that's something that that's really, really that fundamental, but really important to our program.
Last thing, Coach, uh, defending that three as well as you guys did, you know, this past season, how much of that philosophy can come down to the fact that you had a good offensive team from three-point range as well? So there's lots of challenge between offense and defense in practice. Sure, yeah. No, it's, a, it's, it's one of those deals that as a head coach where you're never happy. You, you know, when you're coaching your own team, you, you're going to – um, always be uh, upset that your team gave up a three, but you're going to be happy that your team took a three or made it. So um, for us, though, I think I think playing three or four guards at a time really allowed those guys to move on both ends of the floor. They really, really bought into helping each other and having each other's back from a defensive standpoint, but also getting as creating as much space as they could between the themselves in the basketball letting the basketball breathe and trying to create mismatches or trying to create a scramble situation or or a long closeout which uh, is, is something that we speak a lot about and so again those guys really really understood that and they executed and they held each other uh, they led each other to accountability um in that particular category in terms of defending the three but also being super effective at the three Diedrich Taylor back on Marching to Madness. Yeah. Coach, it's a pleasure, man. I enjoy having you on. I enjoy learning from you. And sure. best of luck this season. Thank you so much. Hopefully we can get you out here and uh, be a part of the Big West. That's for sure. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, that would work. Thank you.